All right, so you've got a platform and you want developers to build an application or an extension or a plugin that sits on top of it. But how do you make that process as quick and as easy as possible for them? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how. All right, welcome. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a developer onboarding experience. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step all of the things that you need to put into action, okay? This work is really important because if you don't create a simple and efficient developer onboarding experience, then people who wanna build something for your platform are gonna get confused, they're not gonna have the right kind of documentation or facilities that they need, and then they're gonna move on. And that other place that they go to may well be your competitor, all right? Now, I do wanna apply a little bit of context to make sure we're building the right kind of onboarding experience, okay? So in a previous video, I talked about the three models of how we build effective communities. And one of those models is called the collaborator model. Okay, so it's like this. And this model is people who are building technology, okay, that, which is what we're talking about. This model is broken into two types. You've got inner and outer. Now the outer, oh, hang on, there we go. Sorry, let me start with the inner. So the inner model is basically open source projects. These are people who come together to work on the same code base. So the nuance there is you need to get people um, who are really feeling part of the same team, the same workflow, the same dynamics, uh, and there's a lot of decision-making that kind of goes into that. So I'm not talking about that model in this video. I'm not talking about that. What I am talking about is the outer model, okay? This is where you attract developers to build on top of your platform. These are gonna be, for example, plugins for WordPress. They're gonna be extensions for uh, infrastructure software. It's gonna be applications that run on top of a platform such as iOS or Android those kinds of examples, okay? The dynamic here is very different because most developers here, they don't really care about how you build your platform. They care about an amazing SDK, great documentation, and that you can help them be successful with whatever they're building, all right? So because we're talking about an onboarding experience, we therefore need a nice, big, juicy triangle, okay? This is our onboarding journey. And there's a start and an end point to our journey. So the starting point here is our target developer. Okay, this is the person we want to bring through this journey. And the end game of this journey is that they actually build something that offers value to them. Okay, so that could be the extension, the plugin, the application, whatever you want, whatever they want to build. The first step of this process is really getting into the mindset of that target developer. Like what do they want to achieve? Okay, so first of all, think about what kind of things do they actually want to build? Like what is that thing? So let's use an example as I go through this. Let's say we're talking about an augmented reality SDK a platform, okay? So they're probably gonna wanna build a game or an, obviously an AR experience. That's what they've got. And think about what are the pain points? What are the roadblocks that this developer is gonna face in building that kind of experience? So with AR, it could be, well, how do I map out the world? How do I build multiplayer experiences? You know, how do I make sure that the on-screen as, uh, digital assets gonna mirror the real world that you're seeing through the camera? How do I deal with lighting? Those kinds of questions. And what you're gonna wanna do is break your developer, uh, your onboarding experience into six different pieces, okay? And I'm gonna walk through each of these and explain how to put them into practice. These are the six different parts of your onboarding. Okay, so the first thing, you, you, the first question is gonna be the why. So when you've done that evaluation of your target developer audience, what you wanna do is create essentially a pitch about why on earth they should be building something on your platform. And this usually exists as a web page, right? So when you think about those pain points and roadblocks that a developer is gonna struggle with as they're trying to build that thing that they've got, right? Formulate those into your, your why, um, and explain how you can invert those pain points and make it as easy and as simple as possible. So if they're struggling with, for example, um, how to integrate the right kind of design assets into their AR game, then explain why your platform can be useful to that and how you've got documentation and support and all these other pieces that can help with that, okay? So this is really important because there are so many developers out there that everybody's trying to attract. There's so many platforms out there and Many, many, many companies and projects don't focus enough on really getting the developer excited about why this is the right choice for them. And the reason why it's important to do this is look at all this work they've got, to, they've got ahead of them. If you can't convince them at step one, they're gonna at some point give up partway through this process, okay? 
So definitely make sure that that's a good web page, all the benefits, the features of your platform, how it's gonna help them to get to this endpoint as quickly and as easily as possible. Now, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to think about here potentially is what is a monetization strategy? So a lot of developers are gonna be wanting to build something to sell. So let's say this person's wanting to build an AR experience that they're gonna sell on an app store. Well, what are the monetization options? Do you offer any kind of monetization within your platform? If not, then what would you recommend to this developer to help them to be able to sell? to reach new audiences? How do they advertise and build great experiences that people are willing to pay for? So put that onto your why statement where that makes sense, all right? Now, step two in the process is the tools, okay? So what are the tools that this developer is gonna need to set up to get up and running? And most typically for an outer community like, an outer collaborator community like this, it's gonna be an SDK, okay? So this is gonna be the core software development kit that they download and they've got full access to, okay? Um, so make sure that that's really simple for them to go uh, and grab. Like in many cases, what I would recommend is on your page that explains the benefits of going through this, you know, of using your platform and going through the process of getting up and running is that you actually connect the SDK to that. So there's a, me a means to download it from, it from there. And when you're evaluating your audience, what platform are they running? Are they running on you know, Linux or Mac or Windows? Are they building for different devices? Do they need certain hardware emulators and things like that? So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is all available in that. And then the other element to this is gonna be supplemental tools, right? So what are the additional tools that somebody's gonna need? Why is there a full stop? I don't know why I added that there. I can't write. You've probably noticed this about my videos. You know, what are the additional tools that they should use on top of the SDK to make building this thing as easy as possible. And that can be things like design tools, modelers, linters, things like that. Things that aren't required to build it, but can be useful as well. So make sure that's all easily accessible from your website as well, all right? Now, the next step, step number three, is now all about skills. And there's a few things you're gonna to wanna to consider here, right? The first thing is gonna be a really good getting started guide okay so they go and they see the value of your of your platform that's why when they read it on your web page they go and download the SDK and the next step is them gonna actually get started in building something so you want to get them to a first piece of runnable code actual value as quickly and as easily as possible so one thing you could do for example is have some code that lives in github and then they just go and clone that code They've already set up the SDK and boom, they can run it. And then you can maybe have your getting started guide, take that template and start changing it into something that's gonna be useful for them, all right? So this is really important. Make sure that your SD, SDK points to your getting started guide. You know, it should ideally be either integrated into it or when you install the SDK, there's a rig, really big button that takes you to the getting started guide so they can get up and running. A big chunk of this is making sure that all of these steps are connected together. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got really solid API documentation, okay? API documentation is the, br the, the bread and butter of any developer experience, okay? So make sure that your full API is published, it's available online, it's got the right kind of information, it explains how the platform works, don't put up a bare bone, just auto-generated set of like class references and methods and things like that. Developers need more than that, okay? You can't lowball it when it comes to your API. You've got to make sure that you do this right. And this is tricky because for a lot of people who build platforms, you know, APIs are generated by people leaving comments in the code base, but invest the time and the energy and the money in doing so because developers are going to get much more value out of your platform if they can actually understand how it works from your API. And then the other thing you're going to want to include in here is going to be tutorials. Okay, this is where you pick a specific problem. Remember when we evaluated our our, our developer audience and we figured out those problem spots and those roadblocks, you're gonna pick one of those problems and show how they can fix it with a specific tutorial. So within our AR context, let's say for the sake of argument that the developer is not sure how to use lighting in this AR toolkit um, so it mirrors the real world that they're seeing through the camera. We'll write a t tutorial for how to do that. This should be 800 to 1000 words lots of embedded code snippets that they can take and get up and running, maybe a downloadable um, uh, you know, code base that they can go and actually just spin up or maybe something they can clone from GitHub and that gets them going, okay? So you see how all of these are connected. You know, we've got the, uh, the why and then that links to the software development kit, okay? They download the SDK and then that takes them off to the getting started guide. 
And then LinkedIn there, you'd probably want to have your API uh, documentation and your tutorials. Okay, so this, these are all really, really critical pieces of the process and make sure that you evaluate which of these things you're going to need. All right. Now, step four is help. No matter how smart a developer is, they're going to need help. They're going to get stuck, stuck and confused about something. There's going to be something that's going to trip them up and then going to need to go somewhere where they can go and ask questions. Okay. So you need to make sure that you've got a resource for that. Now, there's a few different options that you've got here. Okay. For example, you could have uh, Stack Overflow, right? Or you could have um, a forum or you could have a chat channel. Now, as a general rule, I would always recommend you either have Stack Overflow or preferably a forum. Uh, and the reason why I recommend a forum is that this can be a community that you build, you own, uh, and you can influence what content goes there. You can build engagement and relationships and incentivize your members and things like that. You can't do that with Stack Exchange, with, with Stack Overflow. But you can do that if you run your own forum using a platform such as Discourse. I would not recommend you set up a chat channel for this, something such as Slack. And the reason why is that with a forum, if somebody goes and asks a question and then somebody provides an answer, um, that question answer pair will get indexed on Google People will discover it there and they'll, they'll come into the forum and you'll get value out of that question answer combination over and over and over again. You don't get that on Slack. And no matter how much Slack try to tell us that you can search Slack history and you can find previous things, you can't. It sucks. Slack history sucks. And it's not their fault. It's because it's linear communication. It's very, very difficult to go and find meaningful chunks of discussion in just a long you know, spread of conversation, okay? So forums are just a better information architecture for your help solution. So make sure that when, you, when you're presenting your, your Getting Started Guide, your API documentation, your tutorials, that you're always linking off to your forum, for example, where people can then go and ask questions for things that they don't know about, all right? Absolutely critical. Now, step number five is somewhat optional, depending on what kind of uh, developer uh, platform you've got and what kind of community you're building. And this is submission. All right, so this is basically where, you know, I'm getting smudging out my lines here. So this is where, um, if you've got a platform where you want developers to build something that is then available in some kind of store, such as a uh, an app store, or it could be an integrated um, store of plugins or extensions that people can get, then you're probably gonna need to make sure that um, when they create something, it gets reviewed, it gets approved before it gets made available to users. Otherwise, people could have all kinds of malware and viruses and just things that don't work, okay? So if this is an important part of your process, bear in mind one thing, that this can be hugely heavyweight, okay? So you want to make sure that you think about that submission piece really, really well. And I should probably do a video on this in the future because I've worked with various companies who've done this. But you're going to want to make sure that once they've built something, that the way in which they submit it and the metadata around the thing that they submit and how it gets reviewed and then how it gets published is as quick and as simple as possible, all right? So to give you an example, um, let's say somebody builds an AR game and this company that's building the platform wants to showcase that on some kind of app store. Well, what I'd recommend is that as part of the submission process, the developer can go to a web page, they can upload you know, their binary, they can upload a logo, they can put a description for it, the name of it, all the necessary information, screenshots and videos and things like that, it would get uploaded and then some software would first of all go and scan that code base and look for security vulnerabilities, look for bugs, it would look for copyrighted um, material, things like that. And then you'd probably want to have a human being who will then go and review that and make sure that it actually works, right? So you want to try and minimize the amount of human review as possible because that's where you're going to start hitting the bottleneck. Now, it depends on the size of your community, right? For example, WordPress has got thousands and thousands of plugins. This wouldn't work very well for them. However, um, if you've got, you know, 100, 200 applications that are coming in that are relatively, relatively straightforward to review, then it's, it's much easier. So make sure that, again, as you're going through this process, when somebody's got to a point where they've got something that's up and running, again, you're kind of connecting it to the submission piece. Just start simple. Put something in, in, in place where people can just start reviewing it, find the problem spots in your workflow, and then just iterate and evolve. And that's the best way to get to an efficient submissions process. And then the final step here is reward. Okay? This is really important. This is where so many developer platforms don't, like, 
provide one of the most valuable elements of this process, which is when somebody has been through this, and let's just recap it for a second. You've got a developer, they want to build something, you explain why they should do it and all the benefits to doing so and how they could monetize it. You then point them to where they can download the SDK and any supplemental tools. So they, they download that and the SDK links them to the Getting Started Guide. There's links to docu uh, API documentation and tutorials. So they build the skills they need to actually build what's in their head, okay? Then, if they've got questions, you take them to a forum where they can go and ask their questions. There's a community of people who are there to help them along. When they've built something and they're happy with it, they submit it um, for review. It gets reviewed, it gets approved, and it goes into the App Store, for example. At this point in the journey, this is a perfect opportunity to reward them, okay? You know that they've built something with your technology. This is amazing, right? These people are, are awesome, right? So you need to recognize that. Now, this can be as simple as sending them an email that says, hey, thanks, I really appreciate what you did. It's really cool to see you in the store. This could be promoting them on social media. It could be sending them some swag. Uh, it could be sending them a trophy or a certificate or a plaque that recognizes this first major milestone. But you wanna make sure that the next step here is whatever people do in showcasing what they've built the very, very first time with your platform, that you recognize it in some way and you reward it in some way, okay? And what this will be will be somewhat dependent on you. I've got another video up on YouTube uh, and elsewhere where you can learn about swag and the right kind of swag to send out to people, so be sure to go and check that out. But make sure you have some kind of reward that very first time they build something, okay? It's really, really, really important, all right? So that's it, you know? Again, I just wanna recap, you know, first of all, really understand your audience, who they are, what they care about, what their pain points are, what their roadblocks are. Then what you do is you create that really compelling reason for them to build something on top of your platform. Then you make sure they get uh, access to your SDK, it's simple to download, it's available for whatever platforms they're running, any supplemental tools that you can advise as well link from your SDK to your getting started guide, put this on your website as well, make sure you've got great API documentation and tutorials. Then what you do is you provide a place for them to ask questions, it could be a forum or, or Stack Overflow, would not recommend chat generally. Um, you provide, if you need to, a place for them to submit it for review and approval if it's going into an app store. If you're not having anything like that, you can ignore that step. And then once you've identified that they've done something, reward them, give them something that says, we saw what you did, we think it's awesome, we appreciate it. That's what's gonna build the retention, the belonging, the sense of impact that they've got in your community. All right, so that's it. I hope this was useful. Uh, hit a like on this video. If you did find it, that helps my videos to get more prominence on YouTube and elsewhere. Hit that subscribe button and of course that little notification bell to be notified when new videos are coming out. Peace out.